Hey, it's Nina Carmichael. And we made these videos is because you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle. But you know you're capable of more. And get that push by surround yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael. Books are your number one shortcut to massive success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, be consistent. Books give you access to mentors who you would never have access to. If you are struggling thinking, I don't have connections, I don't know anybody who's had success, I don't have any good mentors, everybody talks about mentorship and how important it is and I don't have anybody in my life to help me. <laughs> Books could be that for you. Books can be an accumulation of, of sometimes decades of knowledge, all condensed down into 200, 300, 400 pages that you get a window into somebody else's life. And so whatever you don't know yet, whatever you want to learn, chances are it's in a book. It's in videos as well. <laughs> I love YouTube, but it can be in books. There is no excuse, not anymore, for you not to get access to the information and be around the people that can take you to where you want to go. I'm a big believer that you're a product of your environment. You know, think about who you're hanging out with, where you are right now, where you spend your time, what information are you feeding into your brain? The fact that you're here watching this video is already a step up, is already showcasing that you are an achiever and that you want more out of life, that you, you don't want to stay where you are, that you don't want to be in the same spot. Think about one year from today. You don't want to still be where you are right now, right? You want growth. You want progress. You want impact. You want to touch people's lives. That's why you're here. It just needs to be more consistent. It just needs to be more thorough. You know, there's a expression of the fastest way to learn a language is to go to the country. The fastest way to learn Japanese is to go to Japan. And if you can't actually go to Japan, then you try to make your environment as much Japanese as possible. You watch Japanese TV, you read Japanese books, you go to Japanese restaurants, try to order in Japanese, you start hanging out with Japanese people, you take online Japanese classes, you watch Japanese YouTube channels. Like you, you try to be around it as much as possible. And for too many of us, we're not doing as much, you know? Are you consistent in watching Inspressive videos every morning? I make them every morning for you, but you're probably not watching them every morning. Are you consistent in your other habits and your other routines and the books that you're reading and the, the content you're consuming? Like, are you consistent enough? In it? And that's usually the problem, is that you have these moments where you're bold and you're ambitious and like, I'm tired of this life and I want to do better and this is the day. And so you have the energy and motivation and you go off and do the thing. But then tomorrow you wake up and it's just not there anymore. And you don't stay consistent on the habit. And the only difference between the people who've had tons of success and, and where you're at right now is that they just kept doing it. They just stayed consistent on the habit. And so if you look at reading as an example, I used to read a ton before YouTube came out, before videos. I'm a visual learner, I'd much rather watch something than, than read it, but there was no YouTube. There were no real videos to learn from, so I started with books. And now I've come back to books a little bit where I'm, I'm trying to read 10 pages a day. So the goal is 10 pages a day. And I've been 95% consistent on hitting 10 pages a day. And I also like to read seven to 10 books at a time. And people think that that's crazy, why seven to 10 books at a time? Let me tell you why and you can see if that's a fit for you or not. I think a book represents an idea. When you're reading a book, you, you step into somebody else's world, you step into somebody else's skin, you start to think like them. This is the point. If you're, if you're reading somebody's book, you start to think like them. If you're watching somebody's video, you start to think like them. That's why that habit is so important because the more you're around it, you'll start to think like the people you want to be like as opposed to thinking like the people who you're around right now. If you're around negative people, you start to think more negatively, right? You don't want that. <laughs> you don't want to be the toxic person. And so when you're reading somebody's book or watching a video, you start to think like them. What I found was I would read one book at a time and I would start to think like them and then I would move on to the next book and then start to think like this other person and then forgot about the first person that I was that I really liked. You could be into the book, you could love it, like, wow, what a great book. And then as soon as you put it down because you're done and you pick up another book, it starts to fade. The half-life is really short and reading the same book over and over and over again just loses its impact. Maybe you can read it once a year, but if you just pick up the same book and then read it on repeat, 
it loses its impact. Just like watching the same video loses its impact if you watch it every single day, every single day, every single day. So what I wanted to do was microdose on books. And it was an experiment, so I don't know if it's gonna work, but I tried it and I really liked it. So I microdose in that I take 10 pages a day and it's usually between 10 and 20, mostly depending on where the chapter ends, <laughs> you know? So it's at least 10. So if a, if a chapter ends at page nine, then I'm reading another chapter. So at least 10 and usually in the 10 to 20 page category. And I'll read seven to 10 books at a time. And as I'm going through it, what I find is that the, how long that person's vibe lasts is much longer. So if I'm reading Jamie Kern Lehmer's book, Believe It, great book if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, she went from being a waitress to being, uh, selling her company for $1.3 billion in cash, not, not shares, not equity, cash. Crazy deal, amazing woman, great success story if you haven't heard of her yet, Jamie Kern Lima. So as I'm reading her book, it's about believe, so that's already, that's already great, but she has, a, she has a different way of seeing it. And she has just such a raw, vulnerable energy of sharing all of her weaknesses and insecurities. And as I'm reading the book, I, I feel like her and I feel like I want to share more and, and dive deeper into my story. And she's exposing a part of me that I haven't discovered enough of, right? That's what a good book does or a good video does. And so now I'm reading her book every seven to 10 days because I'm reading seven to 10 books at a time. And what I find is I get a little bit of Jamie. If, I, if you get Jamie, you know, once a week you get Jamie, once a week you get Jamie. It's that little bit of a reminder of the person that you want to be. Now, I don't want to be Jamie, but there's pieces of Jamie that will make me better. And I need that reminder because I could call Jamie and ask her for advice, but we're not, I'm not hopping on a weekly call with Jamie. <laughs> so I get that from the book. I like the variety of having a lot of different books on the go at a time, not in one sitting, like one sitting is just one book at a time. I like looking forward to like, oh, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that next week again. So I, I look forward to when it's coming up. But I think the biggest benefit of reading so many books at a time is just that you carry the feeling with with you for a, a longer period of time. Not even so much the tactics and the strategies in any good book, personal development book especially, but the vibe, the mindset, the feeling that that person is. Because again, when you read somebody's book, you get engrossed, you become them almost. You start to think and feel like them and you want that to last, but it doesn't last. So how do you make it last? You stretch out the book for longer periods of time. Anyway, it's a little hack that I do that is worth a shot. Give it a shot. Give yourself a small goal, five pages a day, 10 pages a day, 20 pages a day. It doesn't have to be sitting down and finishing a book a day, right? The people who can speed read and read a book a day, it's, <laughs> that's crazy. I, I, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Um, but 10 pages a day is doable. And 10 pages a day to step into somebody's world who you respect, who you want to learn something from. If you did that consistently, it'll start to change your life. If you watch videos like this, it'll start to change your life, but consistently, not the one-off, consistently. You know, are you 95% consistent on the things that will help take you to where you want to be? That's the only thing that's missing. You got the heart, you got the compassion, you got the desire to serve, you've got a big mission inside you, you want to do good, you deserve to make more money. It's all of it, it's all there. It's just not enough consistency in the pushing forward to the life that you could have. The consistency in being around the people who force you in a loving way to do more, to think more, to be more of you. If you can make that change, even just for the next quarter, for the next 90 days, that every day you read 10 pages of a book that inspires you or every day for 90 days you watch an expressive video or somebody else's channel that inspires you it'll change your life and it'll start to set you up for the habits you need for success everybody knows the importance of mentors most of us don't have the right mentors in our life and with videos and books you have access to the top minds on the planet to the most inspiring people in the world and if you're hanging around them on a daily basis you'll be a totally different person a better person, a better you, still you, still you, 
but better. <laughs> More proud of yourself, having a bigger impact and making the money that you deserve for yourself, your family, and your community. Rule number two, model success. The fastest way to get what you want in life is to model success. Be super clear on what you want out of life and then go find people who've accomplished exactly that and learn from them. Who you spend your time with is who you become. So choose wisely because most people wake up like an accident instead of actually chasing down their dreams. And it starts with modeling success. I've been a big believer in modeling success ever since my very first business. It's, it's why I continue to do what I do. I, I tell the story, Bill Gates saved my first company. I, I haven't met him yet. Hopefully we'll get to shake his hand and tell him the impact that he had. In my first business, I was making no money and I, and I wanted to quit on my company and I told my business partner that I quit and I felt like I had tried everything. I tried everything. It wasn't for lack of effort. Every day I woke up and, and new ideas came into my head and I tried them and nothing was working. You know when you know that feeling when you're just trying non-stop and nothing is working and the frustration that comes over you to feel like I feel worthless. I felt worthless as a human that I that I wasn't contributing that I was just putting all this effort in and just nothing was happening and that led to me quitting on my business partner. And the next day I woke up and I said I can't quit. I'm going to regret it if I quit right now. But I have to find another way. Like this is it's not this is not working right now. And then I, I just realized I'm not the first guy to try to sell software before. Somebody has figured this out, right? Somebody has gone through this process. I can learn from them and, and maybe apply that strategy to my company and maybe it'll work. And I thought of the only person I can think of at the time was Bill Gates. Now, I had a biotech software company. He didn't have biotech. It was something else. But I mean, I'm at this point, it was, it was bottom of the barrel. I'm willing to try anything right now. And I looked at how he started his company, went from zero to one, and it was through partnerships. And so I applied that strategy to my business and, and shortly thereafter closed my first partnership deal that paid us thirteen and a half thousand dollars. And that was a lot of money for me because I was only making 300 bucks a month at that time. And that gave me hope. And ever since then, whenever I don't know what to do in any area, in life, in business, in relationships, anything, I ask myself, who's done this thing? And it's recognizing that nobody is the perfect person. There's no one person you can learn everything from, but there's different pieces from different people. So when you're super clear on what you want, when it's really easy to know, this is what I want in my business. This is what I want in my relationship. This is what I want in my career. This is what I want in my, this specific thing. I want to be a salsa dancer like him. And I want to be a YouTuber like her. And I want to be a real estate investor like him then that's what you learn from that person. Modeling success is the fastest way to get you where you need to be. Understand that you don't have to be a genius at everything. The, the path before you has already been figured out. It's already been done by other people. And as the famous quote goes, success leaves clues. You have to start looking for them. All right, how do I study success? What is my three-step process as somebody who's maybe done it more than any other person, at least definitely within a YouTube environment? Here we go. Step number one is get super clear on what you want. What do you want? What kind of business do you want to build? And inside of that, what kind of marketer do you want to be? What kind of operations manager do you want to be? What kind of leader do you want to be? And understanding that those may be different skill sets that you learn from different people, right? I want to be a visionary like Steve Jobs. I want to believe in people like AP Janini. I want to be a father like my father. I want to stand up for my principles like Howard Schultz. I want to, I want to know that now is the time to be the greatest me like Kanye West. You're pulling different things from different people. If you start to mush it all together, that's when you lose clarity. Or if I say, I just want to be like Steve Jobs, that's not great because there's a lot of things I don't want to be from Steve. I don't want to be a father like Steve Jobs. There's things that I don't want to be from different people. The goal is to be the best Evan Carmichael. And you can't get that by just following one person, but you take different little pieces from different people when you're super clear. So you have to get super clear on what you want out of life. What kind of person do you want to be? Write it down and be super clear. Step number two is find the people who have it. So who's done it? This is what you want in life. Great, go out and start researching who's done it. So if I want to build a successful software company, who's done it? Bill Gates did it, great. Let me go learn from him, right? Let me understand how he did it. Let me go read the early days of how he got started, right? Not, not so much how he does it now, but how did he get started? So for each of those categories, who has done it? One of the things that helped me free myself from being sick all the time was I studied Wim Hof. I used to get sick all the time. I was sick all the time. I would have a belief system that if somebody was sick, 
If Alex got sick, he's like, Alex, don't come, don't come near me. Don't come over today. Work from home. I don't want to see you because I'm going to get sick. And I would get sick. Every month I was sick. I get sick now maybe once a year. It's crazy. Why? Because I, I decided to study after, after being so fed up with having four days of hiccups that I couldn't get rid of. It's pretty embarrassing. I was hiccuping for four days. I couldn't get rid of it. And I decided I'm, I'm just, I need to get healthy. Who's done this? And I came across Wim Hof. Great. I'm going to learn from Wim Hof and I'm going to learn how to not get sick again. I don't necessarily want to be an entrepreneur like Wim Hof. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I probably don't want to learn from Wim Hof. Awesome. How to not get sick. I want to learn that from him. So be super clear on what you want to learn and then find the people who are the best in the world at that one thing. And that's who you're going to study. And then step number three is live in their world. So if you want to learn Italian, the fastest way is to go to Italy. You'll, you'll be forced to learn it. Chances are whatever you want to learn, whoever you want to become like, the, the people that you want to hang around with and spend time and, and be the next visionary like Steve Jobs, right? Those people are not in your environment right now. And so if you just get this little micro dose once a month, it's not going to be enough. If you just watch one Wim Hof video, it's not going to be enough, right? You might have this one little moment that's amazing, but then it's not consistent enough. You have to live in their world. So. For me, I, I, I've done it by creating these channels. I forced myself to be in people's worlds by creating this. I, I'm not hanging around Grant Cardone every day. I'm not hanging around Gary Vee or Tony Robbins or Ed Milet every day, right? I've connected with these people. I've, I've, I've met a good chunk of them. We've done content and, and hung out, but I'm not with them every day. So it's easy to fall back to where you were. So I force it through my content. I force it through my business. I force it through the YouTube channel that I'm making. Now you could do it for yourself as well. Whatever you want to learn and be more like, be around it, be in it, have it in your world. I look at the Wim Hof stuff and when I was going through his uh, app and, and the material, I was doing it very consistently. But because Wim Hof wasn't a part of my environment every day, I fell off. I wasn't doing the breathing as much. I wasn't doing the cold showers as much. And so what did I do? I printed a giant poster. I would, it's in my bathroom. I would take you back there, but my camera is stuck on a tripod. It's this giant poster of Wim Hof, I subscribe to his YouTube channel. So anytime he has a new video coming up, it's a trigger. It's a reminder Like, yeah, oh, right. I need to do that again. I need to, cause you're going to forget. You're going to fall back to your old habits and your old ways and your old thinking patterns. You need to be shifted into the new one. And that happens by living in their world. So follow them on Instagram, follow them on YouTube, put something up on your wall to remind you of it every single day of that thing that you're trying to become because that thing that you want to become is the best version of you. So we got super clear on, on what best version of you looks like. You've now identified who's done it and now you're living in their world. And that doesn't mean you have to follow a thousand people, but different people for different things to help you be the best. You. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, the science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action for you to shift that habit forward. So I've designed a special free program to help you get more self-belief for every day. For 254 days, I will send you an email to an unlisted video that if you watch it, will shift your confidence forward. The links to join for free are in the description below. For me, my goal is to help building entrepreneurs. And so I wanted, I always want to work on projects that have the ability to have a massive impact. That's what I strive for every single day. Find whatever the smallest first step is and then the smallest next step is and continue to build those steps. And when you look back, you'll have realized that you made some pretty significant progress. Don't go to them asking for help first. Go to them with value first so that they're stumbling all over themselves to try to find a way to help you out too. Bring value first. Rule number three, learn from successful people. Who you spend time with is who you become. It's why I created this channel. So you and I can hang out with people like Warren Buffett. You may never meet Warren Buffett, but you can learn from him. You can be inspired by him and you can change your life for the better by consuming this kind of content. I love modeling success because I learned from Bill Gates. Bill Gates was the first guy that I modeled success from. I had a software company, was struggling, was making no money. I told my partner I quit. And then I asked myself, somebody has done this before. I can't be the first person to try to build a software company. It can't be this hard. Please, somebody's figured this out. And the only person who came to my mind was Bill Gates who started Microsoft. I hadn't been really that interested in reading. I hadn't been that interested in studying success. I was just trying to come up with ideas myself. And I was desperate, right? I told my partner I quit. I was desperate, I was at rock bottom. 
And so I said, somebody's figured this out. I can only think of Bill Gates and Microsoft. And so I studied his company and how he started the zero to one, right? How did he make his first million? What did he do? And it was through partnerships. And I applied that strategy to my business. And, and shortly after I had my first deal for $13,500. And I felt like I won the lottery. And after that, I had a, a pattern to use over and over and over again. And since then, it's been 20 years now of sharing that with you guys. It's been for me, constant learning. It's the name of my channel, Model and Success. It's why I have all these people behind me on the wall. It's why I make these videos every day. It's why I love learning from people like Warren Buffett and Steve Jobs and Kanye and Oprah and all these people because they can shift you because they shifted me. And the thing that they give you, at least for me, they give me one, the inspiration, the motivation, the idea that look at what they started with. If they could start from there and end up at this new place, why can't I? You, you already have more resources than Bill Gates did when he started. You have more resources than Kanye did, than Steve Jobs did when they started. You're in a better position than they were. And they went off to create amazing things. Go study Oprah's story and tell me that you're in a worse position than Oprah was when she started. You're not, you're not. And so it's inspiration. The other part is tactics, ideas, specific strategies, right? Bill Gates doing partnerships through distributorships, all of these things, learning from that and saying, hey, I can apply that to my business. Maybe not 100%, but it gets you 80% of the way. And instead of you figuring out the entire solution, you just have to figure out how to bridge that 20% gap at the end. It's much easier. It can lead to your success. And so I made it a habit, a daily habit of being around success that inspires me, that makes me want to do better. And I hope you do the same. I'm going to give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is identify what do you want to be world class at? I start these videos by saying you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. That's not just a throwaway line. I believe it. You, you're world class. You're the greatest in the world at something. What is it? What do you want to get better at? And if you don't know, at least pick something that you want to learn more about, that you want to explore more in. Like what is the thing that you want to improve at? Be clear, be specific, because chances are the thing that you are the best in the world at is not what your parents did. It's not what your friends are doing. It's not what your husband and wife is doing. It's not what's happening in your community right now. It's gonna be a little different and that's okay because you're different, you're weird, you're a strange duck. That's what, that's what it means to be world-class. People who are world-class at things are not normal. You're not normal, you're amazing, you're the best. Right? So what is the thing that you want to be world class at? Step number two is identify three people who are doing it. Who are three people who are world class, who are crushing it, who are among the best? If you want to be Michael Jordan level talent in basketball, go study Michael Jordan, right? Who do you want to be like? And not exactly, right? You're not going to have the same game as Michael Jordan, but take one thing from him. Take how to dunk from him. Take his jump shot from him. Take his defense from him. Take the thing that you love the most from him and study it and learn it and apply it, right? Three people who are at the top of their game in your field, in your industry, and how can you learn from them so that it can shortcut your path? Because again, chances are your parents can't teach you how to do it and your friends and your husband and your wife and the people around you, they can't teach you how to be world-class at the thing that you want to be great at because they're not world-class at it. So, so their opinions are meaningless. It's worthless because they're not doing a thing that you want to do, right? They might have love, compassion, they might have fear, concern, worry, anxiety for you, but their advice is meaningless to you because they haven't done the thing that you want to do. So find those three people who are world-class at it. And then step number three is create your own 254. So the 254 series is something that I birthed that I talked about at the beginning of this video, where if you wanted self-love and confidence, I created a 254 around it, where every day for 254 days, I send you a video around self-love or confidence to help you feel more self-love or confidence. If you wanna have more confidence, you should sign up for the 254, it's free, and every day you get a video that talks about you getting more confident and shows people who are confident, it'll force to pull you up. Now, I've created a whole bunch of 254s that are free. Maybe you don't like any of mine, and that's okay. Create one for yourself. If you wanna learn from Warren Buffett and how to be an amazing investor, then create your own 254. Because watching one video of Warren Buffett, it's not gonna be enough. Reading one book is not gonna be enough. Because while you're reading the book, you're gonna feel like you're gonna be inspired, motivated. You're gonna be Warren Buffett. It's like, yes, this is what I wanna do. And then when the book is done, you put it down, you put it on the shelf, you move on to something else you start to see that motivation start to fall. 254 is because it takes up to 254 days of consecutive action. Consecutive action to build a habit. The minimum is 18 days, the average is 60 days, but the worst case is 254 days. And so it's that consistent action that most people are missing. So you can read a book about Warren Buffett and you lose the motivation a week later. You need to create your own. 
every single day, the three people who you look up to, you admire, you respect, you wanna learn from, you wanna emulate pieces of them and make that an evolved version of you, you need to be around it every single day for the next 254 days. You do that, your life will change. Rule number four, maintain positive energy. Your energy dictates your results. Think about it, when, when you have felt positive, motivated, energized, ready to go, courageous, bold, you show up differently, right? You show up differently than when you're feeling depressed, that it's not gonna work out, the negative self-talk, someone like you can't do it, you're not getting any momentum, you're not getting the results. Like, think about your own mental state when you are trying to accomplish a goal and the difference between when you have positive energy versus negative energy. It has nothing to do with your skills, it has nothing to do with your potential, it has everything to do with how you're feeling right now. <laughs> right? It's why I say that lack of belief is the world's number one problem. You don't believe in yourself enough, you don't have the right energy level, and so you don't go off and create, even though you've got it inside you to do it, and you've got the heart and the mission and the care and the love, and you want to do it. So it's all about changing your energy states. I think there's a misconception that people who are high achievers wake up and just feel energized and motivated and ready to go, right? Today, I did not wake up and say, yes, come on, <laughs> let's go take on the day, I'm so excited, <laughs> right? That's not how I woke up. Today I woke up, it was dark outside, it's snowing, as you can, you can tell here, right? It's snowing, look at, look at what, look at what Nina's driving through. Stay safe, Nina. Both of our safety depends on it. She's, <laughs> she's driving through the, the snowstorm, it's dark outside, and I wake up, and, and the difference is, I don't, I don't put my feet on the ground to get all jazzed up and start yelling about what a great day it's gonna be. I, I wake up, and I'm tired, and I'm like, why is it so dark outside? Uh, why do we have this snowstorm? Uh, you know, I'm thinking about the call I had yesterday with Brendan Burchard on Zoom, and he's showing me his tropical uh, Puerto Rican beach backdrop, and I got Canadian snow happening here right now. The difference is, the people who you admire, who have the success, who are the high achievers, they don't wake up like they're a, a superhuman and extra motivated, they're just like you. The difference is they have the habits and the routines where they demand the energy from themselves. They create the energy for themselves. And so there's, there's two things that I want you to start thinking about. How do you do it, right? Like, okay, great, Evan, how do I do it? How do I actually change my energy? How do I get it so that I am feeling powerful, bold, motivated, confident, excited on a daily basis? Because it is possible and because you know how great you feel and you know the results that you get when you're feeling that way. So two things that I want you to keep in mind. The first one is having something in your morning routine that demands that from you. So for me, music is the fastest way to change my state, music. I have a, a playlist called the Believe Playlist. Um, it's hashtag believe all caps on my main channel, you can go find it. That's the music I listen to every day. It, that may not be the thing that gets you fired up, but it is for me. Music is the fastest way to change your state because there are some songs that when they come on, when you hear them, it just makes you wanna move. You might get up and dance, you might just be nodding your head, you might be tapping your foot, but there are some songs when they come on that make you wanna move. It can't just be the same song every day because then you're gonna get sick of it and bored of it, but you make a playlist of the different music that when it comes on, it forces you to shift your state. We often put on the music for how we currently feel. So when you're sad and low and depressed or upset, you put on music that makes you feel reinforced in your sad and low and depressed and upset states. When you're sad and low, you don't put on music to make you feel better. You put on music to keep you where you are. That's the problem. That, that then what? It keeps you where you are, <laughs> right? When you put on the music for how you currently feel, it keeps you where you are. Where what you want to do is use music to shift your state. So when you're feeling not so motivated, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling low, you put on music that gets you up. And what's going to happen? You're going to feel a little bit more up. So putting that as a part of your daily routine. Daily, 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 routine. It matters, it makes a difference. If you, if you started your day with music that would make you feel energized, pumped up, motivated, ready to go, if you started your day with that, your day will look different. Your days will look different, your weeks will then look different, your months will look different, and the, the things that you accomplish will look dramatically different, okay? So that's a daily basis. I need you to shift your morning routine to incorporate something like that. Just try it. Try it for a week and see how you feel. It'll make a difference, I promise. Step number two is 
reacting to the moment. So that's what we do in our, step number one is what we do on a daily basis in the morning. Step number two is when we have something that we come across that makes us feel less confident, that makes us feel scared, that is a big opportunity that makes us question ourselves, doubt ourselves. When you look at your calendar, or you look at your emails, or you look at the results and you've seen that you're not where you wanna be. The tendency is to beat ourselves up. The tendency is to play scared. The tendency is to act small. The tendency is to procrastinate and go do something else, right? You know, I've been there, you've been there. Maybe you are there right now. You know what I'm talking about. Energy is now the reason why we're staying where we are. So how do we shift our energy? In those moments, one, remind yourself that you do difficult things. You do difficult things. That if it's hard, that if it's scary, that it's difficult, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it, you're gonna show up, you're gonna do it because you do difficult things. It, it cuts the brain out of the equation because now it's time to show yourself what you can do instead of overthinking, over procrastinating uh, and being overly scared. Rule number five, the last one before our very special bonus clip, be your biggest critic and fan. What do you say when you see yourself in the mirror? When it's just you, when you're all alone, it's just you, you see yourself in the mirror, what do you say? Do you say great things or do you beat yourself up? Most people, they might act confident and seem like they have it all put together, but secretly they're fighting their own battles and at home, in private, the comfort of their own home, they're their own worst enemies. The secret is to be your own biggest critic as well as your biggest fan. The push you give yourself has to be from a place of love and potential, not lack and despair. So I recently posted on Instagram a little cartoon of me passing by a mirror and you see my reflection in the mirror and the caption says, I love you. And then I challenge people to say, hey, what do, you, what do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror? And giving them an 18 day challenge to say, every time you see a reflection of yourself, to say something positive, whether it's I love you or give yourself a compliment, something positive because I think most people live in the land of negativity. All we see is all the negative things that we're doing and all the things that didn't work out and things that could have been better. And that can actually be very healthy. I think you need to be your own biggest critic. I think you need to have higher standards for yourself than what you're currently doing. But it only works, being your own biggest critic only works when it's based off a foundation of love. When it's based off a foundation of I am an amazing human being and I love myself and I suck at all of these skills. The problem that most people have is you see that you suck at a skill that you didn't get the result, that you're not good on camera the first time you go out. You didn't get the result, you didn't land the sale, you didn't make the deal, you didn't get the date, you know, whatever it is, you didn't get the result, and then you think that you suck as a human because you don't have the skills. It's the opposite. You are, you're amazing as a human. It has to be from a foundation of love, that you love yourself, and that you suck at the skills. And then you can beat yourself up over how do I get better? How do I improve? How do I acquire the skills? How do I move forward towards my goals? Most people are their own biggest critic, but they're not their biggest fan. And I'm gonna give you a three-step process on how to change it. Step number one is take the 18-day Flex the X challenge. So if you wanna to go to evancarmichael.com slash flex the X dot PDF, you can get the same calendar that I use. It's not here, it's somewhere, it's in my bedroom. It's where I usually keep it. And every day for the next 18 days, you challenge yourself that whenever I see myself, reflective surface, a mirror, the cell phone, whatever, I'm gonna say something positive to myself. In fact, just make that your cell phone background. And that when you see your, your login screen or your home screen on your cell phone background, on your desktop, it says something positive about you. And it's a reminder, I have to say something positive about myself. Just for 18 days, try it. Flex the X challenge, why 18 days? Because it takes at least 18 days to build a habit. Science says that it takes 18 to 254 days to build a habit. It's why I have my 254 series because I'm there with you every step of the way. And the average is actually 66 days of consecutive action. It means no time off, no days off to build the habit. But the minimum is 18 days. So just try it for 18 days. Just try it. What's going to happen in 18 days? The worst is you're saying something you don't believe about yourself for 18. You can handle it. You'll be okay. The best case scenario is you actually start to love yourself a little bit more. And the things that you can do when you believe in yourself and you love yourself are tremendous. So step number one is take the 18 day Flex DX I Love You Challenge. Step number two is being your own biggest critic as well as your biggest fan. You need to do both. And so ask yourself the criticism that I'm giving myself when I look at my videos, when I look at my content, when I look at how I'm handling my team, when, when you look at all the things that you're supposed to be doing, that you are doing on a daily basis and you beat yourself up, 
identify the parts that are just a skill set that you rock, that you're amazing, that you're the best, but you just don't have the skill set yet. And how do you fix it? How do you acquire the skill set? Through more practice, through more research, through modeling success that you can get there. So split it up. Having that cognitive ability to say, I'm being hard on myself, but really it's just a skill set that I'm lacking and I'm awesome makes a big difference. So start doing it today. And step number three is kick yourself forward, not down. This often comes when you're comparing yourself to others. You're comparing yourself to somebody else who's in your field, who's ahead of you, or somebody who you went to high school with or university with, and, and they have a bigger job than you, or making more money and have more kids, or whatever it is that you're jealous of. You kick yourself down. You say, I suck. Well, they, they're off doing this, and they acquired this by the time that they were your age, and, and you suck. You're not doing anything. You're nowhere close, right? That's kicking yourself down. That's not helpful. What you need to do is kick yourself forward. What you need to do is look at that and say, that's what's possible. That's the potential. That's what, that's what you can be capable of doing. But here's the thing. I think you actually need the kick. I think the comparison is good. I think it's healthy. I think the problem with the comparison is you're only looking at it from the negative because you actually don't love yourself yet. You have to build that up, right? Do the 18 day flex X challenge. It's based out of love to say that this is what's possible because without the kick, without the comparison, you stay where you are. The key though is you're kicking yourself forward to say that's what's possible. That's what I want to create. Somebody else has done it. I can do it too. I've got Michael Jordan level talent. I'm going to go off and crush it instead of kicking yourself down and saying that you suck and you're never going to get there. Every time you say I can't, you're teaching yourself that you suck. Because you've quit. Because you've given up. It's not your fault that you can't do it. It's your work or your school, or your family, or all the other commitments that you have, but not your fault. Nope. 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 Change your I can'ts to either I'm going to, or I choose not to. That's how you take back control of your decisions and your life. So I recently listened to this Chinese song and I got obsessed with it. I got obsessed with it. I was playing it all day long and I just, I loved it. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what, you, I don't know what the, the words mean. I just loved, I loved it. I loved it. I go to bed and lyrics start coming to me. Rap lyrics in full sentences, right? The first one comes in. Okay, wake up. I'm in bed. I'm lying in bed. I'm trying to sleep. You know, it's 11 o'clock. Trying to sleep, trying to sleep. Pfft, idea, rap lyric come. Okay, I write it down. Again, rap lyrics come, write it down more and more and more write it down until three in the morning i haven't slept yet ideas just keep coming for this song that's like i need to make a rap and then what comes into my head is that what you're gonna make a rap <laughs> it's easy to get locked then into i can't mode i can't do this i can't start that i can't do a rap i, I didn't go to school for that I I not that you go to school for rap you know i didn't rap growing up i don't have musical talent Right? That's not what people know me for. That's not what people expect from me. I can't rap. That's where most people quit. But instead, I decided I was going to get up at three something in the morning, go to my computer, finish writing out my lyrics, and then I spent the day rapping. And that night, finished the video, sent it off to uh, Christina, my editor, to put it together, and the next day we released my rap video. Now, maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. It's gotten some decent responses. It was tons of fun to put together. And most importantly, I taught myself in all of these things, these are all great micro moments to teach yourself that you're amazing. Whenever you say, I can't, and you do it, that's how you build self-confidence. That's, that's the birthplace of self-confidence, self-love, self-respect, is taking something that you think that you can't do and just trying not even doing it full out because I don't expect my rap to go off and win any kind of awards, right? But I tried it, I did it, I released it. Expect to suck at the beginning, that's okay, it's normal, it's part of the process. But in those moments of I can't and then turning them into something that actually exists is where your genius will come. I look at my top 10 series and it's partly why I have Kanye on my wall because the first video that I made was on Kanye. First top 10 was on Kanye, it was five years into my YouTube career. I did a response to my friend Mark Drager from Phantom Media and I said initially I can't do this like I, I can't make a video now on this I have all these other commitments I have a full day ahead of other stuff that I'm supposed to do and said no I did action I'm just gonna do it forget it I'm gonna make it and I didn't expect it to do well 
luckily it actually did. And then that became this whole thing of making, I don't know how many top tens, hundreds, maybe a thousand. I don't know how many top 10, how many top tens have I done? I have no idea. But it started off as just idea. Trust your ideas. Know that they're amazing. Stop saying I can't to yourself. This is where you need to take control of your head and your heart. You have to make decisions with your heart and then use your head to figure out how to do it. Anytime you're doing something new, super important. Anytime you're doing something new, I'm making it, I'm gonna make a rap, I'm gonna make a top 10 video, I'm gonna do anything outside my normal thing, right? Same for you. Anytime you're doing something new, it doesn't make sense because it's new. What is brand new doesn't make sense. You're creating something new. And so your head, your logical brain that's designed to keep you safe, doesn't understand it. Its job is to, to protect you and says, don't do that. You can't do that because one, it's never been done and because we have all these reasons why it's not possible for you, not just anybody else, for you. Like, you can't do it because you haven't done it before. That's what your head says. Your heart can create something new. Your heart creates art. Your heart makes up a world that hasn't existed before. And so at the very beginning of many projects, your head and your heart are against each other. Your heart's saying, I wanna make this. Your head's saying, you can't make this. And so you end up staying stuck in limbo with all these ideas, never taking momentum because your, your head and your heart are fighting. You've got your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time, never moving, knowing that you're capable of more. And so you make the big decisions in your life with your heart. And then you rally your head to say, okay, we're doing this. I'm making the rap video. I'm making the top 10. You're going to do your crazy idea. And then your head says, Ooh, okay. They're serious. <laughs> Let's figure out how not to die doing this, right? Let's figure out how to actually make it work. So you make the big decisions in life with the heart and then you use your head to figure out how to go out and accomplish it. So how do you stop saying I can't and turn your ideas into action? I'm going to give you a three step process that I think will help. Step number one is say, I can't, and then have a blank and then fill in that blank. Like, what can't you do right now? I can't, and not some stupid thing like, I can't fly. I can't jump off a building. Okay, great. Like, what are your actual goals? What do you wanna accomplish in your life? Accomplish with your business? What do you wanna have happen? Within that context, what are you telling yourself that I can't do? So when you say, I can't, and you leave a space there, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you need help, if you're not getting it, go look in the mirror, serious. Like, Pause this video, go to the mirror, look at yourself in the eyes and say, I can't, and then see what comes up. Whether you actually say it out loud or it's just in your head, that little voice inside your head that is also oh powerful. What is it saying that you cannot do? Write it down. Step number two is you're gonna do it. Do it. Whatever the thing is, do it. You can't rap, rap. You can't make a top 10, make a top 10. You can't whatever, do it like the smallest possible way. If it's make a wrap, I don't expect a fully polished, amazing video, right? The 2% difference, take that idea that you have. And instead of planning to get to hundred percent, the 2% difference is figure out what is the first 2% of that idea and just do it. You say you can't do it. Great. Do it. The difference between doing something and not doing something is doing something. So just go do it. Show yourself this, this could be the greatest day of your life. If you take something, this is what you want to train yourself. Like if you say, I can't do that. If you're in the habit of saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, you need to flip that. That's not again, some monumental thing, some giant event that happens. It's in the daily, it's a daily battle with yourself. Confidence comes from the daily battle with yourself A flipping. I can't to showing yourself that you can try that you will, you're going to do it. So do it. Whatever that I can't is go do it. Find some small way and just do it. And in set number three is expect to suck. Expect to suck. Don't expect to be great. If, if you say, I can't make videos and then you go do one, expect it to suck. That's okay. That doesn't mean, see, I can't do it. Look, it sucked. No, 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 no. You tying yourself worth to the results is a losing game. It's the process you started. All that's missing now is a skill set. How do you get a skill set? Practice. Practice. If I suck at making rap, but every day I worked at my rap skills, I would be better. I may not win a Grammy, but I could, I could spit out some fire rap. I just believe it. And I want you to believe that too, that whatever this thing, you might think that's ridiculous that Evan Carmichael thinks he could be a rapper. That's what I want for you because everybody's saying that you are ridiculous for thinking that you can become an ex and worse than that, you are saying that it's ridiculous for you to become an ex. You can be an ex. 
Practice, dedication, hard work. It's just a skill set. The thing that's missing is momentum. Momentum comes from the belief that it's possible. So you can't what? You can't X? Do it and expect to suck. And prove to yourself that you're capable of starting. You're capable of building momentum. And that now that the only thing missing is a skill set. And just like any other skill, you can pick it up through practice. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to learn the seven step guide to never lose in life, check out the video next to me. I think you can enjoy Continue to Believe. I will see you there. You will never lose in life if you have valuable skills. You won't lose your house. You won't lose your car. You won't lose your clients if you have a skill that brings people value. The economy can collapse. 